I declare the 10th Emergency Special Session of the General Assembly resumed. Members will recall that in paragraph 4 of its resolution, ES 10 stroke 22 of 12th December 2023, the Assembly decided to adjourn the 10th Emergency Special Session temporarily and to authorize the President of the General Assembly at its most recent session to resume its meeting upon request from member states. In this regard, I should like to draw the attention of delegations to document A stroke ES 10 stroke 991, which contains a letter dated 24th April 2024 from the permanent representatives of Mauritania, Saudi Arabia, and Uganda to the United Nations in their respective capacities as chairs of the Arab Group, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Group, and the Coordinating Bureau of the Non-Aligned Movement at the United Nations in New York, requesting the resumption of the 10th Emergency Special Session. I intend to conduct the proceedings of this meeting in accordance with the rules of procedure of the General Assembly and the past practices of its emergency special sessions. In keeping with established practice, I should now like to invite the attention of the General Assembly to document A stroke ES 10 stroke 992 concerning member states that are in arrears in the payment of their financial contributions to the United Nations within the terms of Article 19 of the Charter. May I take it that the Assembly duly takes note of the information contained in this document. It is so decided. In this connection, I should like to recall that at the 39th plenary meeting of the 10th Emergency Special Session on 26 October 2023, the General Assembly decided to follow the provisions of Resolution 78 stroke 2 of 5 October 2023, by which the Comoros, Sao Tome and Principe and Somalia are permitted to vote in the General Assembly until the end of its 78th session, and to also allow these member states to vote at the 10th emergency special session. The General Assembly will now resume its consideration of Agenda Item 5, entitled Illegal Israeli Actions in Occupied East Jerusalem and the rest of the occupied Palestinian territory. In this connection, the Assembly has before it a draft resolution contained in document A stroke ES 10 stroke L30 revision 1. The President will now deliver a statement from the rostrum. Excellencies, distinguished delegates. Decades ago, the situation in the Middle East marked the first significant crisis for the newly established United Nations. Since then, 
for almost the entire lifespan of this organization, peace in the region and for the people of Palestine in particular has remained elusive. Today, this untenable situation continues to deteriorate at alarming speed, bringing countless innocent victims into its deadly fold and pushing the region further to the brink of full-scale catastrophe. While numerous diplomatic efforts and the United Nations resolutions have been deployed, regrettably, none have yet quelled the current cycle of death and destruction. Yet this is not a moment for the international community to falter or to look away. If anything, the horrendous events of the last seven months have only hastened the urgency of achieving a just, comprehensive, and lasting peaceful solution to the situation in the Middle East. Excellencies, today let us remember the legacy from which we hail. We stand proudly upon the shoulders of those who, many decades ago, recognized their ultimate responsibility to forge a peace that would banish the scourge and terror of war for many generations. Those who knew full well the undesirable role that war and violence played in their own lives and who made no apologies for imagining and indeed building a more peaceful world beyond it. They understood the value of international cooperation and sought the active participation of all nations, large and small, giving voice to common principles on which they dared to anchor mankind's hope for a better future. As today's United Nations, we cannot and must not lose sight of the history we inherit or of the bold proposition that brought our organization into being. Peace for all. I repeat, peace for all. Excellencies, this General Assembly is convoked today to pronounce itself within its powers and mandate and to uphold the functions and responsibilities bestowed upon it by the United Nations Charter, including under Article 4. I therefore call upon the membership to purposely assess the situation before us with nothing else in mind but a commitment to peace as our utmost ambition. Most immediately, I urge the parties to this conflict with the support of those with leverage to do their utmost to secure an agreement of ceasefire that would end the suffering, end the bloodshed, free all hostages, protect innocent civilians, and ensure immediate unhindered access of humanitarian aid without conditions. I repeat, without conditions for all who are in dire need. In closing, it is true that lost time is never found. It is also true that we have lost much time. We are here once again called upon to work for humanity. And we the peoples, without exception. To believe in the essential goodness of others as Ralph Bunch put it decades ago, 
in the understanding that no problem of human relations is insoluble. I appeal to all member states to so comport themselves during this debate as to maintain the dignity of this chamber and of the organization. Ultimately, to help bring lasting peace, to save lives, and to end violence, to which we have all dedicated ourselves in the service of the people. I thank you.